Streptococcus agalactiae. It is a gram-positive coccus. The word strep means chains and coccus means spherical, so this bacterium has chain-like arrangement. And the second word is agalactiae. Whenever you see A, it always means absent, so they would consider it as no. And galactiae is derived from galactose. Galactose and lactose both are found in milk. So agalactiae means of no milk. This disease was first discovered as a cause of cow mastitis. Strap agalactiae belongs to the family Streptococcaceae. As in this picture, you can see that the strap agalactiae is occurring in chains. Some are short, some are long, and is spherical in shape. Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to another episode of Bacteriology series. In today's video, we are going to look at strap agalactia in detail. But before getting started, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. So let's dive straight into the video. Streptococcus agalactiae is catalase negative. For those of you guys who are not familiar, what is a catalase test? Let me tell you. Catalase is an enzyme released by certain bacteria and is not released by certain other bacteria, streptococcus being the one who is not responsible for releasing catalase enzyme. I'll touch upon catalase test in the lab diagnosis section. Streptococcus agalactia is also coagulase negative. This bacterium is beta hemolytic, is basitracin resistant, and belongs to Lansfield group B classification. If you see GBS written somewhere, it definitely means group B strep. Don't worry, I'm going to talk about classification in a moment. Streptococcus agalactiae is PYR negative. PYR is a short form of pyrilidonyl arylamidase. PYR is a qualitative procedure for determining the ability of streptococci to enzymatically hydrolyze L-pyrilidonyl beta-naphthalamide PYR. Streptococcus agalactiae is hippurate positive. Hippurate or hippuric acid is a carboxylic acid and organic compound. It is found in urine and is formed from the combination of benzoic acid and glycine. This bacterium is also facultative anaerobe. I've got a cool mnemonic for strapped agalactiae. You have to remember one letter and that's B. Streptococcus agalactiae belongs to group B. That's why it is GBS group B strep. It is basitracin negative. It means that it's resistant to basitracin. That also starts with B. It is beta hemolytic bacterium. And then we've got pyrilidonyl. If you replace P with B because a bottle look a bit like same like that, you can memorize it. Pyrilidonyl resistant or negative. And then hip puree also replacing P with B. Hip puree positive. Hope this mnemonic will help you. Lecture outline. We are done with the introduction of strep agalactia. Now we'll be talking about classification, morphology, its habitat in transmission, pathogenesis, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Streptococcus agalactia is further classified based on serology, Lansfield classification, so here I'll say that strep agalactia belongs to group B, then also on the basis of hemolysis and biochemistry. On the basis of hemolysis, strep bacteria are further classified into alpha, beta, and gamma hemolytic bacteria. Alpha hemolytic bacteria are responsible for partial hemolysis and they're further classified based on optogen sensitivity into strep pneumonia and strep virulence. I've got detailed videos on both of them. If you've missed that, be sure to check them out. And next ones are the beta hemolytic bacteria. They are responsible for complete hemolysis or complete lysis of blood. It forms a clear zone around their colonies. Beta hemolysis is due to the production of enzymes, the hemolysins called streptolysin O or streptolysin S. As you can see in this picture, the clear zone around the colony on blood agar. Beta hemolytic bacteria are further classified based on basitracin sensitivity. It's an antibiotic. If a bacterium is sensitive to basitracin, it belongs to group A, for example, strep pyogenes. And if a bacterium is resistant to basitracin, it belongs to group B, for example, strep agalactia. As you can see there, on the right side, there is group B bacterium, strep agalactia, that is resistant to basitracin. And on the left side is group A, strep pyogenes, that is sensitive to basitracin. And the third type of streptococci based on hemolysis are the gamma hemolytic streptococci. They're responsible for no hemolysis morphology. Streptagalactia is spherical or round in shape. It's arranged in chains. When we see under microscope, we'll find out the short chains, but when we look them onto the culture, they will be having long chains. 
the diameter of streptococci varies from 0.6 to 1.2 micrometer. It is purple in color. Why? Because it's gram positive. Structure. It has got thick peptidoglycan cell wall. That's why it retains the dye and is purple color. It is encapsulated. It is non-motile and non-spore forming bacteria. This is how streptococcus agalactia looks like under the microscope. Habitate. Generally, this bacterium is found in genitourinary tract or upper respiratory tract. But to be specific, this is found in female genital tract. Transmission. Transmission is the vertical transmission. Maybe in utero, when the baby is not born, is present in uterus and mother is infected, so mother will transfer that infection to the baby. Or during the delivery, when the mother is infected, this infection will be transmitted to the baby. And there are certain risk factors for that transmission, um, like large number of bacteria that are responsible for causing the infection in the mother, prolonged rupture of membranes or premature prolonged rupture of membranes or preterm birth, intrapartum fever or mother has inadequate antibodies to fight against that infection. Pathogenesis, we are going to talk about the virulence factors in the pathogenesis. The major virulence factor in case of Streptococcus agalactia is its capsule. It has type-specific carbohydrates like 1A, 1B, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up to 8. And they're responsible for causing different diseases, like early onset neonatal disease is caused by 1A, 3, and 5. And late onset neonatal disease is caused by the third one, and the adult disease is caused by 1A and 5. These are type-specific carbohydrates. And the second virulence factor is CAMP factor. Don't confuse it with the cyclic AMP, it's not that. CAMP factor, this CAMP is an acronym for the people or the researchers who discovered the phenomena and is named after their name. And this enlarges the area of hemolysis for Staph aureus. CAM factor are responsible for the identification of strap agalactia. Then we've got group specific carbohydrate like B antigen because this bacterium belongs to group B in the Lance field classification. Now let's talk about the clinical findings. This bacterium, the strep agalactia, is mainly responsible for causing neonatal diseases, but it can also cause diseases in adults. In neonates, it is responsible for causing pneumonia, meningitis, and sepsis. You can memorize it by PMS. Pregnant women need screening at 35 to 37 weeks of gestation. Why? Because if the infection is detected at that time, then interpartum penicillin is given to reduce the complications. And these three diseases occur in babies and there can be permanent neurologic sequelae. As I mentioned, there are two types of neonatal diseases. One is the early onset neonatal disease and the second one is the late onset neonatal disease. So what's the difference between both? Early onset neonatal disease occurs before the day 7 of life, while the late onset neonatal disease occurs after day 7 of life. I've got a really cool mnemonic for that and it is for a pregnant woman or mother. S is for swabbing like at 35 to 37 weeks and also for sepsis. P is for pregnant women like they are swabbed and also for pneumonia. And M is for mother or if we flip it we'll get W or women. And M is also for meningitis. In adults, strep agalactia are responsible for causing endometritis, bacteremia, pneumonia, periperal or peripartum sepsis. UTIs, your infections, skin and soft tissue infections, and let me clear one thing there. As this disease was first discovered as a cause of cow mastitis, there will be no mastitis occurring in humans. Lab diagnosis, we'll need certain samples. We'll need samples from vagina, rectum, like we'll go for vaginal or rectal swabbing. We'll also need sample of CSF, the cerebral spinal fluid, cause of meningitis. This will be done via lumbar puncture. In gram stain, it will be revealed that this bacterium is gram positive and is purple colored. Under microscopy, we'll see that it is spherical and round in shape, varying in diameter from 0.6 to 1.2 micrometer. This is how it looks under the microscope, spherical in shape, occurring in chains, and is purple colored. As I talked in the introduction, that we'll be looking at the catalase test, Streptococcus agalactiae is catalase negative because no bubbles are formed. Now you might be thinking what the heck are bubbles doing there? So let me tell you. 
Normally, what happens if a bacteria releases catalase? Catalase is an enzyme. It then converts hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. And oxygen is responsible for forming bubbles. And if a bacterium has no catalase enzyme, like in case of strep agalecti, it will not convert hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen and no bubbles will be formed. That's why I've said that. Streptococcus agalactia is not responsible for forming bubbles because it is catalase negative. For culture, we'll need vaginal or perineal swab. And culture is done on blood agar and it will show beta hemolysis because this bacterium is beta hemolytic. And in some places, you might find that selective broth medium are used for culture. Colonies are bay situation sensitive, they're glistening, they're gray white in color, they take a long time to form and have long chains. PCR, the polymerase chain reaction or NATE, nucleic acid amplification test, both are effective and they take less time as compared to cultures. Treatment, as I mentioned earlier that during gestation we'll screen the pregnant women at 35 to 37 weeks and if they were detected with the infection we'll give them intrapartum penicillin this is penicillin G and the infections caused by strep agalactia are also treated with cephalosporins like clindamycin, cefazolin, and vancomycin. Intrapartum microbial prophylaxis is really important to prevent infections caused by strep agalactiae, then practicing good hygiene and maintaining a healthy lifestyle can also help. All right, guys, let's review everything really quick. Today, we've talked about streptococcus agalactiae is responsible for causing neonatal infections like pneumonia, sepsis, and meningitis, but it can also cause certain other adult infections like bacteremia, endometritis, etc. It is transmitted in utero or during delivery, human beings are the host and the primary location is the female genital tract. Its diagnosis is based on gram staining, microscopy, culture and catalase test and is treated with intrapartum penicillin, specifically penicillin G, and also with cephalosporins. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments and I'll catch you soon. Till then, assalamu alaikum.